Hello, and welcome back to my top 120 games of all time. Getting right out of the gate here with number 19 through 10. With number 19, Final Fantasy 13. Final Fantasy 13 um, was pretty awesome when it was first announced. Um, it was the uh, first next generation Final Fantasy game. Um, and. Uh, it both went back to the old style and uh, and also came up with some of its new stuff. Um, I really like it, and I know a lot of Final Fantasy fans really uh, would disagree on me with that. Uh, a lot of people say that this is uh, not the worst, but not really one of the best Final Fantasies, but I disagree. Um, I find that uh, the biggest complaint with this game is how linear it is. It is a uh, it is the first Final Fantasy game that's just straightforward, walk in a straight line, beat the enemies that you encounter. But a lot of people might um, kind of have a lot of problems with that, but really, in my eyes, I see a game that's more linear has better storytelling, and a game that is open world has lesser storytelling. But there are the occasions where there are really, really good games out there that are both open world and tell a very good story. Um, I found that uh, Final Fantasy XIII really focused on storyline rather than uh, rather than focus more on like having an open world of exploring. Um, and that was one of the ways that it was different. But it also took some aspects from Final Fantasy X, which made me really happy. Um, definitely one of my favorite uh, Final Fantasy games. Uh, will always uh, I'll always remember it. Um, has some pretty badass characters too. <laughs> and also, oh my god, the summonings and the cinematics in this game just kick so much ass. Um, yeah, really good game. I want you to play it if you like RPGs. Number 18! Mortal Kombat. And I'm talking about the new one. Hell yeah, I am. Uh, on my old list, Mortal Kombat Deception was right here, but um, now it's the new Mortal Kombat. Um... I find that with every Mortal Kombat game they make, they make it uh, slightly better, except for uh, anything past Shaolin Monks and uh, Armageddon. I found that uh, those two weren't uh, really catered to uh, classic Mortal Kombat fighting. Um, they really just were trying to throw as many um, people in there as they could. And I didn't really like that. Um, but with this Mortal Kombat, it really was um, almost like the case of Nuts and Bolts. Um, it changed a lot of the style of Mortal Kombat and changed the way um, slightly how it's played. But it also went back to a lot of the old uh, classic versions of it and had a lot of great nostalgia in this game. Um, it wins the award of the most difficult game I have ever played. Um, actually, that uh, it ties with Banjo-Tooie. Um, with the Canary Mary race in Cloud Cook Cuckoo Land. Um, it ties with that because this is. It's one of the hardest games I've ever fucking played. Um, you really have to buckle down and get your shit straight if you want to do this without uh, having. without uh, finding little ways past things. Um, to beat it just old fashioned, like, you know, like just doing it, like not paying your way through any challenges. Man, oh man. This is a hard ass game, but uh, very fun. Um, really cool x ray moves. I love how it was a modern day Mortal Kombat game. Um, how these are absolutely awesome. Um, stages are cool. They brought back a lot of the old ones. Really brought, brought back a lot of the old. Like that. Number 17 StarCraft. StarCraft was probably the first uh, RTS that I ever actually got into. Um, once again, I really like the story of uh, the StarCraft universe, and uh, well, <laughs> I can say that about pretty much everything Blizzard makes, I really like the story of. Um, StarCraft uh, has that uh, space western feel to it, um, and uh, really uh, explores the, uh, the uh, really, um, <laughs> I guess you could say, hillbilly-ish ways of the western in the uh, opening cutscene for it. 
And no, when I have uh, StarCraft up here, I also am considering its expansion pack because I don't really want to consider them both separate games. I just combine them into one. You'll see that later on as well with another game. Um, because really, an expansion isn't a separate game. They're just adding shit and, a, and a, I guess you could say a slightly more alternate storyline. Jesus shit, everything's blowing up in here. Um, yeah. Awesome game. Uh, it really, uh, made, it started my, um, not really, it didn't start my love for RTS, but, um, it definitely sparked my interest with Blizzard. Um, and, uh, it's one of those games that I really like. It is probably, um, it's probably tied with Halo for the most, uh, known game around the world. Um, it also, um, it, uh, I can honestly say that this is probably the, uh, most competitive game out there, um, with the addition of StarCraft 2, because, hey, look at Korea, it's a national sport over there to play this game. Um, really fun game. Number 16, Minecraft. <laughs> oh boy, here we go. <laughs> um... I have LP'd this game, uh, plan to LP it again, and it definitely wins that award, and to me personally, um, it's the only game that will probably ever get the privilege by me to be LP'd twice, because uh, I feel that really, um, it wasn't my fault that I screwed up the LP or anything, I feel like there's just so much to show in this game that... If you're going to LP it, you're either going to LP it for a while, or you're going to LP it twice, and I'm choosing to LP this game twice. Um, very fun game. My god. Uh, I remember back when I first heard about it, I really uh, didn't have any interest at all um, in this game, and then uh, I read the uh, the guy's Survivor blog on uh, this website, and... Um, he wrote a blog every day about his adventure to try to get to hell and back. Now you know where my inspiration for my LP came from. And uh, this blog is really what inspired me to start playing this game. And um, just reading this guy's thing was made this game come out to be so hilarious and just so awesome. Um, I really like it. Um, everybody should play this game at least once in their life. Or at least, like, give it a chance despite the fact that you have no interest in it. Because... Trust me, not a lot of people know what it's about until you actually play it, and it is far different from anyone thinks. Um, and the beautifulness of the environment in this game is just... <laughs> it's just stunning how sim simplistically beautiful some of the environments you come across in this game are. Uh, Naturally created a uh, masterpiece, and can't wait for it to actually come out to see what's actually in the game uh, when it does. Um, yeah. That's Minecraft. Number 15. Super Mario Galaxy 2. Um, Super Mario Galaxy 2 is... Sorry, I was actually uh, looking at something else. Super Mario Galaxy 2 is, well, the sequel to Mario Galaxy 1. Um, another game I'm LPing. Um, I plan to LP this uh, sometime, not directly after Mario Galaxy 1, but sometime. Um, this is my favorite all-time Mario game. Uh, and a lot of people would probably disagree with me on that, but I don't know. Uh, they took what they did in Galaxy, and they really uh, improved upon a lot of the uh, aspects that I guess you could say would bother some people, but to me, they just added more, and it made it even better than Galaxy 1. Um... I absolutely um, love the 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 way that they did this game differently with the whole map system and uh, the way that you uh, get comets with the comet coins and um, uh, a lot of the uh, the new suits and the new things you get um, Yoshi I mean God they added so much in this game and it uh. And how you can play from Luigi from the start at some levels. It's its just uh, absolutely amazing. Um, 
And the Grandmaster Galaxy, uh, the Comet run at the very end of the game. Man, oh man, <laughs> that's one of the hardest things I've ever had to do in a video game, but I actually did it. Um, it took me a while, too. But still, this game, I think Nintendo really should stick with it. Not really keep making just Galaxy games, but when this, when the first one and when Galaxy 2 came out, it proved that Nintendo still knows how to make damn good games. Number 14... Half-Life 2, Episode 2. Um, yeah. This is the, uh, the, the bigger, the biggin'. Um, Episode 2 continued the storyline of Episode 1. It, uh, it <laughs> really delved us deeper into the, uh, area outside of City 17. It, uh, showed us to, like, these whole new environments that, like, you'd never even think to go through in a Half-Life game. Like, a forest, or, like, an antlion cave like way deep underground or like these mine shafts and shit it's like it really feels like you're playing a different game entirely but you know you're playing Half-Life and um just man this game is one of those games where you could just play through it over and over and over again and uh really it does not get boring um from the ending like final stand with all the striders like that's super epic um it revealed that uh that um it actually <laughs> shows how g-man's plans can be deviated uh by the vortigons and he could actually they could actually change the way that the universe works and basically um they deviate g-man's plans g-man gets all pissed off but then later on he goes like wait, this actually might be a better course of action than what I would have done. And, um, really what happens is, uh, you find out later that you aren't the only one who knows about G-Man. Um, there is another human who does, and it is, uh, pretty epic when you find that out. Um, awesome-ass ending. Um, it, I cannot wait for episode three, when and if it ever comes out. Fuck you, Valve. Just announce it already, goddammit. Number 13. Elder Scrolls Oblivion. <laughs> the uh, counterpart to Fallout. Um, man, oh boy. <laughs> this is another game that really defines the word epic. Um, and I know during uh, Fallout 2 I said that uh, that was the... Um, that a lot of people claim it as the uh, the second longest game of all time, or like the second longest in terms of gameplay hours and things to do. Well, this is number one. This game is absolutely fucking gigantic. Um, you get all the DLC for this game, and you just naturally, like, don't even attempt to 100% this game. <laughs> If you try to go through, like, every cave, every nook and cranny, and just try to, like, get to the end of the dungeons and just find everything and do all the side quests, you're going to be playing this game for probably, like, a good, like, three to four months of uh, actually, like, playing it every day, doing stuff. Uh, <laughs> and that's that sounds like an extreme exaggeration or something, but no, I am probably dead serious about that. Um... I plan to LP this game. Uh, not sure if I'm gonna 100% it because that would be probably the longest fucking LP you would ever see. But um, definitely plan to do something in this. On actually my top 120 list, I plan to um, either LP or do a video about um, each one of these things. Um, and I hope that I can do that at some point and um, really explain more in depth some of the stuff about the game. Really good. Everyone should play it. Number 12, Kingdom Hearts. Man, I wish I gave myself more time for Oblivion. Got sidetracked. Um, Kingdom Hearts is uh, probably one of the best RPGs I've ever played. And I know I've said that to a lot of RPGs in this uh, game, in this uh, list, but 
really Kingdom Hearts is uh, one of those games that if you don't play it or if you don't like it, boy are you missing out. Um, these games are absolutely awesome. Um, it's just when Square Enix and Disney set out and they worked together when they announced originally that they were working together on a game, a lot of people were like, holy hell, what could they possibly be making together? Like, is this going to be like when Nintendo and Square Enix teamed up to make Mario RPG? Who knows? But really, when they came out with Kingdom Hearts, a lot of people were like, what the hell does that mean? And then they saw gameplay where you're playing as someone with Goofy and Donald and just, like, beating the shit out of people, leveling up, going through all these Disney worlds, and we shat a brick. Oh, my God. Final Fantasy characters meet Disney and, like, a clash of the awesomes and all these Disney worlds and Disney references and Disney voice actors and, oh, my God. Um, Tied it all together with the fantasy elements of uh, Final Fantasy games t- thrown into there. Um, it really is a groundbreaking experiment that I consider one of the biggest successes in video game experiment history. Um and yeah, it's uh, it's just awesome. Um, really like all the characters. Uh, something I never hardly use in this game, though, was the summons. Um, I only ever use them when like when someone asks me to play like their file to get through a boss, like they don't, they can't get through. I'll just like I'll mess around with a summon or something, and boom, do it. It's like why don't I use those? Number eleven. Holy shit, The Sims 2. If you went back in time and told my younger self um, that one of the greatest pastimes you'll ever remember when hanging out with friends is playing The Sims 2, I would probably slap you across the face. But that inadvertently came true. This game is so much fun to just sit down and play with friends. Um, With all the expansion packs, uh, which I own... um, It's just, this is the indefinitive game that I have found in my life that I can play literally. Like, no stopping, nothing. Like, I could play this game probably for fucking ever. It's so weird, and it's like, I've never found another game that's even come close to that. Um, Where I could just literally play it for hours and hours and hours and hours and hours and not get bored. Like, I could probably play this for 24 hours straight and not get bored. Um, it really just, um, it, I don't know. This game definitely changed my life. I can say that, too. Um, you're going to be hearing that a lot <laughs> during 9 through 1. Um, I don't know. Just, it seems like the simple concept of just, like, creating a world, living someone else's life, living, like, these fantasy elements of your life... But, man oh man, I've had such good times playing this game that it is forever going to be embedded in my memory. Um, It has awesome ass music. Um, So much to do in these games. It's like, oh my god. Sims 2 is definitely my favorite out of all the Sims. Um, I hope the Sims 3 eventually one day takes its place up here. Um, But it still has to have time for more expansions like the Sims 2 needed. But still. Number 10. Yes, we are in the top 10 now with Earthbound as number 10. Earthbound is... um, Oh my god. (laughs) This is uh, a mind-blowing RPG. um, And it is by far the most underrated RPG of all time. Um, It's definitely also wins the award for... um, doesn't win the award, but it definitely is a, a close runner-up to funniest game I've ever played. Uh, the dialogue in this game is just so witty and so funny that, like, really, when you play this game, you're going to spend hours doing it because you really want to just stop and talk to everybody because the game programmers wrote all these ridiculous, hilarious lines to people that you normally, during a regular playthrough, would just walk right past. Um, it really pays off to talk to people and explore in this game and uh, really the concept of it was an experiment in and of itself and unfortunately it failed but man so many years later this game still packs a fucking punch because now it has a cult following to this game Um, it really is uh, one of the 
most underrated uh, diamonds of uh, video game history. Um, it's hilarious, like I've said. It's so much fun. Um, and, yeah, it's... I completely lost my train of thought. Um, man, I wish I could say more about it, but uh, I don't want to spoil too much about this game. Uh, super fun. It's They took a ridiculous concept of taking just... Rather than having an RPG in a fantasy setting, they were like, well, what if we had it in suburban modern America with a kid with psychic powers? I mean, interesting already. Anyways, join us next time for number 9 through 1. Aw, yeah. See you then.